Hi, my name is Ryan, this is Big Picture TV. With me today is Brenda Coyne. She is Froga's HR representative. Today we will be discussing techniques and tips for when you attend an interview. Hey Ryan, how are you? So Brenda, how long have you been working for Froga? Um, I started working with Froga in May 2009, so that would make it six years this May. How important is the CV and what do you look for in a CV? Um, a CV is a very important document. Um, it's really your first chance at setting a good impression with the organisation that you want to work for. Um, and um, what we would look for are things that we would be looking for, the qualities and the skills that we'd be looking for in the job that we've advertised. Um, so especially now we get a lot of applications, we get about 100 applications for every job that we advertise. So what we're looking for in a CV or in an application form is something that will differentiate somebody from everything from everybody else. How long should the CV be? Um, rule of thumb is really two, two pages um, and how you set that out can be in lots of different ways. So you don't have to have lots of um, lots and lots of text, stick it to the point, you know, bullet points, not lots of uh, long sentences or anything like that. You can get a lot into two pages. I, I would never kind of go really much further than that. Um, when you're interviewing someone, what should you look for? Oh gosh. Um, when I'm interviewing somebody, the first thing that you think of or the first place that you would look are is the job that you're interviewing for. Um, so say if we're interviewing for a youth worker position, um, like some of the, the youth workers that you'd be working with here in the big picture. So that type of job, we'd be looking for things like, can they work with young people? Are young people going to, to like them? I suppose that's really the most important thing. And then looking at things like their qualifications and their skills and um, then do they have the knowledge to be able to implement the different types of programmes and the different types of activities that we'd be looking for them to implement in the different projects around the country. But for youth workers, I suppose the first thing is, are they good at working with young people? How important is your personal presentation? So it's, it's quite important. It's probably a little bit too important. And it's funny you say that because young people say to me, if you, have said to me a few times, well, it shouldn't matter what you look like. You know, you should be taking on what you're saying and the qualification that you have and you've been able to do the job. But whether you like it or not, personal presentation is important. And what it does is that it gives, gives the interviewer um, an indication of your professionalism in the job um, and your ability. You know, I suppose what we would say is if somebody isn't going to make the effort to present themselves correctly in an interview situation, which is, should be your best foot forward, um, then maybe they mightn't be in, in a position to do that if they're going to stay meetings with different funders and things like that as well. So rightly or wrongly, it does make, it does make a difference. And um, you know, things like having your, your shoes clean and having you know, a shirt and tie on and having you know, just, just neatly dressed. You, know, you don't have to wear your three-piece suit or your, you know, your, your tuxedo or anything like that. But a uh, neat presentation, it does make a difference, yeah. A lot of people are nervous in an interview. How does that affect your decision? Does it affect the decision? Um, I'm not sure that we, it would affect the decision. It doesn't, it doesn't, and I'll tell you why I say that. Um, first of all, we'll always take it into account if somebody's nervous, and it's very obvious if somebody's nervous in an interview. And interviews are nerve-wracking situations. They really are, you know, for everybody. They're nerve but they're also nerve-wracking for the people on the other side of the table. And I suppose it's our job to make sure that people are relaxed. But where it does impact is if the nerves take over so much that then you're, you're, you're not able to answer the questions that are being asked or you're not putting your best foot forward. So in that way, your nerves can affect the outcome, but um, we'll always take it into consideration if somebody's nervous and we'll always try and maybe repeat a question or you know, give them another chance at the end um, because it's, only, it's human nature. Interviews are nerve-wracking things. So do you have a question for your interviewer and if so, what are some good questions to ask? Okay, so that is a good question. Um, the, uh, you, you absolutely should have uh, some questions prepared for, for the interviewer. It's always good to have something to ask at the end and usually people will say that. Um, the types of questions that you could ask are things around the, the working environment or the organisation itself, maybe something that you weren't able to find on their website or um, maybe something about the job that you didn't, job description that you didn't understand. And that shows that you've thought through the whole process and that you've thought about you being in the job. So yeah, it's always a good idea to have a question at the end. Okay, thanks again for coming in, Brendan. My no name problem. is Ryan and this is Big Picture TV. Thanks very much, Ryan. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks again for coming in, Brendan. My name is Ryan and this is Big Picture TV.